I've been looking everywhere for y'all. Dude, so much is going on. So much. So stay tuned and we're going to give you a big micro backyard farm update. Yes, things have been going on. Just because there aren't YouTube videos doesn't mean that the production stops. It definitely probably amps up because in order to film and garden, it takes a lot more time. So let's get right to it here at Black Pack Homestead. Thanks for watching. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful my name is Morella, and my husband Chris and I homestead here in Western North Carolina on 0.81 of an acre. Not quite an acre. And we raise rabbits, we raise quail, and we have a flock of chickens. And we also grow this garden that I'm standing in. I just wanted to take a minute and welcome you guys here if this is your first time. I hope you like what you see. Um, let us know in the comments down below. Give us a like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. But yeah, so let's get to it. So, what has went on here at the Black Pack Homestead? Oh my goodness, so much. But for this update, we're going to talk about the animals a little bit because the chickens have a new situation. And, you know, we need to show you that. It turned out really good. Um, but the garden is just now starting to get wild and uh, we are actually starting to harvest. It is like two weeks later than I normally have my first tomato. We had a very late frost this year here in Western North Carolina, which made me lose my blueberries this year. Didn't have many strawberries. Sorry, I'm getting bitten. Didn't have many strawberries this year, but even though everything it was planted two weeks later than it should have been, everything is jamming, everything is beautiful. Let's take a look at that. So as you see here is our garden. I have no idea what the square footage of it is, but it used to be a lot smaller. We mulch with our grass clippings and the spent hay from our rabbits and when we are brooding quail we do it on deep bedding in a kiddie pool and we also mulch with that and that is how we expanded our garden and created our garden only the bottom half has been tilled way down there one time everything from the blueberries up we have done strictly with mulch cart and cardboard so it's like a slow, it's like a slow composting situation. That's how we like to do it. And we have several little gardens here. We have this one, which is our main garden, or we call it our perennial garden. And then we have this little side garden here on the north facing side of our house. We have some ramps in there. If you don't know what ramps are, ramps are a wild leek or they taste like a cross between a garlic and an onion and they grow wild and usually you can't grow them in a garden. They grow up in the woods, way up in the high mountains. And as you can see, we've got a few tomato plants in here. Some of them were volunteers and some of them I planted there. I had a bit of a catastrophe this year. Sprouting tomato seeds didn't go so well. And when they finally did sprout, all of my markers were gone. So I have no idea what any of these tomatoes are. I just planted them and hope that they fruit and I, that's what I wanted. I mean, I know the seeds I planted, but I'm not really knowing until I see fruit. So speaking of fruit, let's look at my tomatoes because if you're new here, tomatoes are my favorite, 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 hands down favorite thing to grow. 
and my favorite thing to eat. I could eat tomatoes 24-7, just like you would eat an apple with a little bit of salt. It's wonderful. We have suffered rabbit damage this year, as long as a lot as as well as a lot of bug pressure. We've had to deal with a lot of squash bugs and a lot of cucumber beetles and Mexican bean beetles like all of our squashes that are in the lower part, I, I had to replant them twice because they kept getting eaten as baby sprouts. So with the pest pressure, the two little little young adolescent rabbits that have, or wild rabbits that have called our garden home have done a lot of damage. They've ate my pea sprouts, they've topped my tomatoes, they've ate my bean sprouts, and now they're doing this. Da -da! Yep. A rabbit did that. There was another tomato hanging here. As you can tell, there should be three. Well, um, they ate the first one that blushed. They damaged this one. I left it hanging, and I picked the third one, and it's now ripe in the house. But when your first mortgage lifter, I now know this is a mortgage lifter plant, when your first fruit of the year gets eaten by a rabbit, after the rabbit ate the pea sprouts, after the rabbit ate the bean sprouts. I had to plant the beans twice, too. You know, it just doesn't... It doesn't warm my heart about these rabbits anymore. They are cute, and their poop is in our garden. We can tell the difference between their poop and our rabbit's poop. You know, and so there you go. At least they're giving us some poop. But yes, that's the tomato that I'm just going to leave till they eat it. Maybe they'll leave the ones that are blushing over there alone. But yes, I now know this is a mortgage lifter plant. And as we go, start at this tomato row, this little guy is a volunteer. If I have volunteers, I like to try to keep them. If they are in a keepable place, you know, like not in the middle of a row, or, well, you know, or, you know, things like that. And this little guy seems to be a little tiny cherry tomato. He's tiny, tiny, tiny. I had some volunteer like this last year, and I didn't like him, so I was very hesitant about letting it grow. But Chris was like, you never know. Maybe it cross-pollinated with something better. So we'll find out as soon as they blush. But yeah, that's my mortgage lifter that I only have one tomato off of so far. And this, I believe, is looking like a mortgage lifter as well, and they're starting to blush, 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 blush. And in between my tomatoes, as usual, I have my basil planted and a big holy basil. This was one tiny little plant, and look at it. It's huge. It's beautiful. And I also have a variety of purple basil, which is really a mild basil. Oh, goodness, it's grew this big limb, and it's broke. I'm going to have to get my basket, and we're going to have to cut that. We might can root it. Yes, you can root basil as long as you've got a good note at the bottom where you've snipped it It will root because I Rooted basil this year off that plant. There's my basket <laughs> So yes rooted basil this year already off that plant and that one's in a in a um, planter in the front yard but since Feels good here in the shade but since this is broke, because we've been having some high winds and some storminess in the afternoons, as you do, in the south. So we're just going to take this guy, because he's just like, he is just, let me sit you guys down, because I don't want to cut the other half off accidentally. We will just snip him right there. And put him in our basket for this morning. There it is. Yay! Yes, it's the 2nd of August, and I'm just now getting a t getting tomatoes. I know, it's insane, but that light late freeze really messed us up here. So let's look at tomatoes some more. Here we have what I'm believing is either another mortgage lifter, or a Paul Robeson, or a Dr. Weichies. This, I think, is an Amish paste, just because they're very uniform and squatty looking. This, I also... This may be a Dr. Watchies because it's got a big old faciated one up here. And this is yet another volunteer tomato plant. 
And those are blushing, blushing. I ate my first one last night, and these are definitely Chadwick Cherry Volunteers. This one is, and they are yum o oh, delicious. Skin's a little thick. That's one thing about Chadwick's, but I still like them. They're very sweet and meaty. And then here, at the end of that tomato row, is the lemon cucumbers that are finally going to go over the top of our cattle panel trellis arch. Yes, I finally have an arched cattle panel trellis. It was awesome. Chris just took our existing cattle panel trellis walls and bent an eight foot panel in half and made this beautiful arch. And I've got my wind chimes up. Look at the pollinators. I've got my wind chimes up and my, and my prayer flags. Yay! So just a little bit of added beauty to the garden. And you'll notice on my trellises I've got little, little bugs and stuff, pretties, hanging up on them too. So yes, these are the lemon cucumbers. This is my first year growing them. I don't know if you guys watch Cog Hill Family Farm, but that's who I saw grow this. And I thought it was cool. And I thought the way the fruits are made, it would be good for the arch trellis. And so this is my first time growing them. Um, so far, I ate one and it was a little underripe, but it already had giant seeds. So I don't know if this is going to be a great variety for me because of the big seeds. With my Crohn's disease, I have a hard time digesting seeds, so kind of have to be careful. I still eat whatever I want. I just eat smaller amounts if it's something that could possibly cause me troubles. So yeah, so that's the lemon cucumbers, and that's what's growing on the end of the tomato rows on the arch trellis. Cool beans, huh? Cool beans. And then on the other side of the wall trellis, we have this pitiful, pitiful, pitiful ox heart plant that is broken right there. And that has one, count it, one beautiful tomato. But that's okay, because I have another plant right here that is an ox heart. And it has this big, beautiful tomato. And these big, beautiful tomatoes. And it is setting more tomato, more tomatoes. So, that was one of the ones that got topped by the rabbits or a deer. It topped our asparagus. I mean, we don't know if it was rabbits or deer, but since the rabbits are still here, I'm going to say it was them. So, on down the tomato row, I have no idea. We'll know when it turns color. I planted... Dr. Wychies or Witchies. I planted Paul Robeson, Mortgage Lifters, Amish Paste, and Ox Hearts and Chadwick Cherries. And this is what we have. This is looking like it's going to be a yellow tomato to me, kind of, sort of. What do you think? So that may be a Dr. Wychies. I've never grown Dr. Witchies, Wychies, however you want to say it, um, or Paul Robeson. So it's my first time, so I don't know. We'll wait and see. So yeah, everybody's starting to blush. The rabbits are enjoying the, the fruits of the harvest and joy, joy. It is joy. I love my garden. I'm sweating here in the sunshine, but I love it. Um, here in front of the tomatoes, we have my little tiny pepper row. I uh, have a hard time with spicy foods, but I'm gonna try to learn to eat them for the health benefits. And this is my first time ever growing jalapenos. We harvested one, I haven't eaten it yet. But there the jalapenos are, they're finally coming on. Got some more blossoms setting. And this is a giant Marconi pepper. It is a sweet and smoky roasting pepper and I've never grown it either, but I've saw lots of other homesteaders use it and I thought I would give her a try. So that's the one big fruit on that one. Not harvested off him yet. And then here, next to the giant Marconi, is your run-of-the-mill Bonnie Bell green bell pepper. And it's got a couple of fruits. Well, can you see that? I can't see that. There you go. And then beside it, we have a lovely bana sweet banana pepper. I do like sweet bananas. I've always liked sweet bananas, but there you go, sweet banana pepper. And then, let's go back and get our basket because we have something else to harvest, folks. 
this is a volunteer squash. Um, we didn't know what the heck it was, but it finally set a fruit, and that looks like a pumpkin to me. So I think this is a volunteer pumpkin plant. So that's pretty cool. There's another little squash plant volunteered here, but it's just tiny struggling. I don't know what it is. But we usually have loads and loads of trouble growing um, yellow crooked neck summer squash, which is one of my favorite, favorite squashes. Squash bugs usually decimate them, so I moved where I planted them this year. Though we still have squash bugs, they I'm going to get some yellow crooked necks. Check this out. We got one to harvest this morning. Ta-da! I don't know. Maybe I should leave it a little longer. It is on the small side. But that is harvestable. And only one of my zucchinis survived, which may be a blessing. Who knows? Look at that giant blossom. Isn't that beautiful? And over, I harvested one zucchini already. And then here's our next guy coming right on. So, uh, there you go. And you may have noticed I've got a couple of collard plants and a couple of lettuce plants that I'm allowing to go to seed so I can save the seed. So that's what that, that is about. And over there in the ramp patch, we have dino kale along with those tomatoes. And that dino kale's been kicking Ever since the spring, it's not bolted yet. It has definitely had a lot of bug pressure. We have had to treat it many times. We grow nor largely um, natural and organic practices. So I wouldn't call our farm 100% organic, but we, we don't spray any chemicals, but we do like to use Bacto. So that's the only unorganic thing that we do. Hello, Christopher. Hello, everybody. You guys, if you don't know who this guy is, this is my husband, Chris, that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. And he is the workhorse of this farm since the garden season was late. And I haven't even told you why we haven't been making videos. But um, he has really took care of all the animals, done all the animal chores so I could plant the garden and try to take care of it. So... He's our work course. Have you Have you guys uh, heard about all the progress we've been making? Or well, we, we t I told them the chickens had a new situation, but that I wanted to focus on the garden, and we would go talk about that in a minute. I didn't know if y'all would recognize me through all the corona beard here. Oh, uh, yeah, and he's got long hair now. Yeah. Turn around, let's see your ponytail. Oh, my hair's... No, I know, but it's no, a ponytail. Oh, it is. It's still up. See? He yeah. has a pony. Take it out for a second. See, I love it. Look at him. He's like beautiful. A, like a skinny caveman. No, he's like a skinny Ross Poldark. Getting close to Jesus level. There you here. go. It's beautiful. He has the most beautiful hair, and when COVID happened and he needed a haircut, I was like, oh, just let it grow. I've never saw you with long hair. Yep, so this is the time to do it. Nobody gets to see my face, so. So, you know, it's like the young years he had long hair, but by the time we got together, he didn't. But he grew it for me, and I love it. He's got all these beautiful curls. I could ramble forever, but let's get back to the garden because I am pouring the sweat. So, I tried to grow watermelon this year. Never grown watermelon, never grown a melon in my life. I planted these things, and they sprouted, struggled, got ate by bugs, planted the cantaloupes again, and I don't have any melons set. These plants have struggled. I think it's going to be a fruitless effort for us for watermelons this year. But I will show you the cute little plants anyway. See how cute he is? He's just a little baby watermelon plant. He's a sugar baby. Maybe that's why he's so baby. Who knows? There's some plantain, and you notice all these stumps like that one. That is all from the massive sunflower field that you saw in our last video when they were super tiny. But there you go, another volunteer tomato. They're everywhere. Another volunteer tomato. And then here is one watermelon, one sugar baby watermelon. Yep, that's all it's done. And I started it from seed a long time ago. And then these are our cantaloupe vines that have no cantaloupe, but they're growing. And that's success in my mind since I had such a hard time getting them to grow in the first place. So then there's a beautiful marigold and some beautiful calendula, a zinnia that's just about to open. And down here is the squash patch. Some things are good, some things not so good. Like this spaghetti squash plant. I planted it like you plant it. Do I have a spaghetti squash? 
No. No, no spaghetti squash. But, you know, I've never grown spaghetti squash, so it's a learning adventure for me, I guess. So, oh wait, look! A female flower with a tiny fruit. Will it make it? Will it make it? I don't know, folks. That's the second little female flower I've saw in this thing, and the last one turned to mush and died. So, maybe we'll get one. Who knows? But as you see, there's... That's the rest of the, um, what do you call it? Spaghetti squash. And here is some honey nuts, which are one of my little favorite squashes to grow because they're stinking cute and they're stinking good. And right there it is. It's just a tiny little butternut squash. Single serve. See, and there's one that came from a faciated blossom. You got a mutant there. And then this is a, is a sugar pie pump. Sugar pie. No. It's a sugar pumpkin. It's a pie pumpkin plant. And I have yet to see it set a pumpkin. So I don't know how successful that's going to be. And then another pumpkin plant. Here is a true butternut squash that has no butternut squash. Oh, 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 one female flower, tiny, tiny, right there. And then over here, this one has... Dude, is that honey nut too? This one's... Oh, no, that could still be a big butternut because it's a lot lighter green. So, yeah, that's a lighter green. So, yes, this is a butternut. But it looks like a honey nut now because it's so tiny. But it's light green, so it's a butternut. So, yeah, that's the squashes. And I'm melting, melting, melting. And I tried to grow some more cucumbers, regular straight cucumbers. And as you can see, cucumber beetles, squash bugs. Yeah, I don't think these are going to work out too well either. But you live, you learn. And I can take this and grow from it and know that cucumbers don't grow good back here. Bugs are back here. Go up there where those are growing. Now, they have bug pressure, but not as heavy as back here for whatever reason that may be. And then here are our blueberry plants. I told you we didn't really get a harvest because of the, the late cold snap we had. So what came the birds mostly got? I mean, for it to be August and see yeah, blueberries got, on there is we weird. Gypped. Well, <laughs> it, it, was, it was the weather. It was the weather. And then here I'm growing okra for the first time. Never grew okra. These are volunteer ground cherries back here. We've got three of them. And I was tickled to see that because I had issues getting those to sprout and live as well. And then the okra is finally getting to look like okra. Oh, isn't that cool? Yeah. And then all this volunteer kale is from the red Russian kale that we grew last winter and into the spring and we let it bolt so we could save seed. And here you go, kale. It's everywhere. It's everywhere! But that is not a bad thing. <sighs> now that we're to the back of the garden. We did not make a video when this incident happened. I couldn't. And the reason we haven't been making videos is, yet again, my magnesium is low. I've had to have a permanent line put in my chest to get magnesium infusions. It's called a porticath. But that's why we've not been making videos, because I've been too sick to film. But this event is probably more life-changing for us than the coronavirus. I don't know if you guys remember, but several videos back, about three months ago, we um, let you guys know Ellie had had a seizure. You know, Ellie is um, the oldest of our pump pack of the... Ellie is one of the black Pomeranians that is Ellie, that makes the black pack. And we told you that Ellie had had seizures, and we didn't know what was wrong with her. And we ended up taking her to the vet, and the vet said she had congestive heart failure. And that, you know, we could have her for months or years. There are dogs that live years on the medication. So we went home and we loved her for three months. And we gave her her medicine and we gave her anything she wanted. But in June, it got too much for her. She 
fell over and her head cocked back and she had a seizure and all this fluid just came pouring out of her mouth and she screamed. I mean, I never want to hear that again. So the next day we called the vet. Chris took off from work and he took her and I said, let's just get an x-ray and see where we're at got the x-ray it was significantly worse it was like her breathing through a tiny straw her trachea was so closed off from all the fluid in her lungs and the enlargement of her heart so we made the decision to go the next day and have her put to sleep and it was horrid it was awful they really didn't want to let us go in with her because of the covid but i was like we'll wear gloves will wear masks you don't understand this is truly our daughter um, if you've been around here for a while you know our story about why we can't have kids but you know that's not the story of today so um, Ellie passed away around the uh, 14th of June and I'm going to show you her precious grave and also Critter our lab Chow is buried back here Lazarus the first Pomeranian we ever had a little rescue pitiful dog and of course Arthur that we lost back in December of 2019 and I think God was preparing my heart for Ellie with the loss of Arthur because God I miss that rabbit. So I'm going to show you Ellie's little grave. She's tucked over here in the shade and got some tiles over her so nothing would dig her up. She's got a lovely little flag and her flowers and this over here is our lab chow's grave it's a critter i need to get him a better stone when i order ellie's stone but he has a flag and then this is my precious lazarus the first pomeranian he was our little rescue he's what made me love pomeranians and then arthur doesn't have a marker yet but he's right there And the ferrets. Oh, and our ferrets <laughs> are somewhere in here. I did have a marker where those blue flowers are is where they are, if you can see those blue flowers. The marker must have been destroyed in, you know, many years of it being there. So that is one of the more sad things that's been going on while we've not been videoing. Um, of course, my health has been terrible. I've had lots of nausea and vomiting and diarrhea from my partial obstruction but you know we're we're feeling better now just gotta make sure i rest enough which is i filmed a lot in this past time past few months i just didn't get it edited because i didn't feel like editing but yeah i'm gonna show you my porticouth right quick so y'all don't see it's under my skin you can't see anything but that little hump and they access it with a needle and then they infuse the magnesium that i no longer can absorb through my bowel um, thank you for watching. Um, we appreciate you joining us and sticking with us. We're sorry about not producing any content lately, but it's just like right now. I've walked around and shown you the garden and did basically nothing, and I'm, I'm sick. I feel like when I went to get water, I threw up. So, yeah, it's really hard for me to do this, especially when I feel bad because I don't feel like I'm giving you guys what you deserve because I'm not myself but in this case I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on and say hey to all the new subscribers and thank you and stick with us we do put videos out it just depends on my health really um, but yeah so um hope you liked our garden and our new chicken setup and seeing all the fruit on the trees in the beginning of the video yes we're actually gonna have apples this year we've never had apples off of our tree and so it's awesome i showed you the plums and or the plums the peaches in the very beginning video i zoomed in on them and so we're gonna have peaches this year so you know some things don't work out and others do and that's the way it works in the life of a homesteader so that's it see you here next time at the black pack homestead thanks for watching take care in these troubled times and as always god bless